Welcome back. With the election for the upper house behind us, tomorrow starts the election for the governor of Tokyo. Apparently, since people have heard of my withdrawing my candidacy, everybody's coming out of the box, Michael. There's a lot of candidates, of course, only a few of whom are viable. But Let's they're all crazy. Uh, they, okay, they are risk takers. Risk That's takers, perfect. indeed. The last two governors, for reasons that are not have nothing to do with the legality or illegality of their actions. In fact, what they had done was entirely legal. Nevertheless, were forced from office. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a kind of an iffy job to take on. And yet, we have some really interesting candidates. We sure do. But our favorite is Koike Yuriko. Well, right now, she still seems to be in the driver's seat. But the local LDP chapter and the national LDP organization have finally gravitated up toward another candidate. And that's, that's Masida. And he... He's a serious candidate. He's been governor of Iwate Prefecture. He's been a cabinet minister, civilian, which means that he is a specialist. And what he's a specialist in is local government. Right. And he's interested in local problems and in, and in terms of uh, the movement of women within the society, where they get to, where they go. He's very famous for the Masada report that shook the country's complacency about the very important issue of depopulation mm -hmm. for borderline communities and showed in very graphic terms how bad the situation is in terms of population loss over the next 40 years. So a really serious person perhaps shouldn't be running for governor because this is a dangerous, dangerous place to be. He looked great on TV at his press conference and one of the things that struck me, he's very well-spoken. It looks like he, he really prepared well for this press conference. But if you've ever been in a Japanese classroom and you've asked for any questions, everybody's sitting on their hands. In this press conference, he asked if there were any questions, and everybody in the room shot up their hands. There were more than 100 people there. No, the, the, he, has a, he has the ability to answer those questions, which not everyone in the political world in Japan does, mm -hmm. let's be honest. He really has... He has his own think tank. He's got what it takes. Now, before we go all hog wild about that, the reason why I still think that Koike Yuriko is in the driver's seat as an independent, not supported by the LDP, is because, well, okay, we've tried two intellectuals in a row. We had Inose right. and then Masazoe, and they both came in as reformers, as Masada has that reputation as well. And the system just ground them up. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we need a tough as nails person. And the toughest nails person in this crowd that's come up is Koike san. There are so many contenders that have just come out of the woodwork. I mean, they are all, I'm sure, significant individuals in their own right. The election starts tomorrow. That cuts off anybody that wants to come in. That's they need right. to they need to pitch in their application. Yeah, the, the question is whether there's going to be a division on what you call the liberal left side. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the uh, candidates who is neither in, here nor there is uh, the, the lawyer Utsunomiya. Now, right. he ran last time in the end. Formerly he, the chairman of the um, Lawyers Association. That's right. He, he's been it actually a number of times, an extremely studious man, I, looks like someone you would never think could win a modern election. Not a handsome man, right. not really kempt, but when he gets up on top of a vehicle and starts talking, he becomes electric. Yeah. It's really amazing that, the, I mean, I suppose it's like the Bernie from Mount Manal in the United States, that, that right. he, he, he really reaches out to the young, he really talks about issues that have to do with Persons who are largely marginalized in society. I, I mean, he's a lawyer and he, a very simple man. Uh, you can see him on the subway. Mm -hmm. If you if you were on the, you, he rides. He 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 doesn't have a car drive him around. He, he you you will often see him with his bag on his lap and he's there reading a book. Nobody bothers him, and and, and he's quite famous. And I, I mean, I, I've seen him out in front of the, the the main courthouse and with his fellow lawyers. Very personable. Uh, and again, not someone you you would associate with this telegenic age where you have to have a fully coiffed hair right. and, and, and and you have to have the correct suit on. He he doesn't really care. He may not be a candidate though because we do have one of those telegenic persons in Torigoe. Yes, Torigoe, but it looks like he's um I don't know, he's 
um, kind of here and there and everywhere. Well, Torigoye is, is, an, is a newscaster, but he's not a, a, a flaky one. He looks like a flaky one. He has, he has that perfectly coiffed hair. He has this aquiline profile. Uh -huh. You say, oh, this guy's got no brains. But if you go, you can go, for example, to the FCCJ, the, the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan's website, where they had that wonderful press conference of all these former great TV announcers coming out against the uh, secrecy legislation and the uh, talking about the, the uh, well, in their view, collapsing world of press freedom mm -hmm. in Japan. He, speaking to the audience. Yeah, speaking to the audience. His presentation there, I use one of, of the five panelists, he makes real sense and, and talks about the issues having to do with, you know, this is about democracy and this is how democracy is supposed to work. Mm -hmm. And you realize that he's not an, a stuffed shirt, that he has actually thought about it and, and he does, it's not a reaction from a professional newsman, but he's thought about the broader issues of what, how the society works. So a great candidate. And it seems that the DP, the communists, the, the, what's left of the socialists and what's left of livelihood are coalescing around him rather than Utsunomiya. Well, speaking about coiffed hair, how about Junichi Ichida? Oh, well, that was interesting. It, that lasted a day. His candidacy lasted a day, and then he went home and talked to his wife, and she said, I saw on TV that you announced your candidacy for governor of Tokyo, and who do you think you're kidding? <laughs> he, he, he withdrew his candidacy the next day? Yeah. I mean, it's... It, it, look okay, at, he's... Okay, for some background, he has been on the barricades in front of the Kante on the security legislation. Uh, the protest there with, with shields, with the... Uh, members of the Communist Party and, uh, and other groups that have been su protesting the security legislation all this time. He's a professional actor. He's a professional actor. He's years old. Yeah, he, and very good looking, very well regarded, uh, and vehemently anti-Abe. Uh, he has been there. He has a political background. And so it was not entirely implausible, but you really should check with your wife first. You should. Now, what was really implausible for me, and, and I, I nearly lost it, was the even shorter amount of time that Koga Shigeaki was the Democratic Party's choice. That lasted 12 hours, mm -hmm. maybe more, I don't know. Uh, I, when I watched on the evening news, Matsubara Jin, the, uh, the head of the DP in Tokyo, inviting Koga Shigeaki, who is, in my view, a fruitcake. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he's, he's, he's not a prevaric, he doesn't lie, he's not a prevaricator, but he exaggerates. Mm -hmm. And he's has this persecution complex that the Abe administration is trying to, sh to silence him. Okay, it would be great entertainment value to have him run for governor, but for the DP to be his supporter, right. that immediately just, my, my heart just sank. Right. And in the morning, it was gone. And, and your heart came right back up. <laughs> yeah, and it, suddenly it was Tori Goe. Right. And I say, well, what happened? Mm -hmm. uh, did, did someone have, you know, a brain? Right. <laughs> the die will be cast tomorrow. All of the candidates will collect and put in their, their applications and then electioneering starts Thursday. And almost immediately. And the election is for the end of this month. It's going to cost a lot of money. And it, again, it's ironic. The amount of money that's going to be spent on this election is hundreds of times the amount of money that Mr. Masazoe was accused of being a little bit shady with. It's, it's completely disproportionate. Mm -hmm. the, the cost to the city is, is, is maddening, especially since Masazoe served in office long enough to get his pension. Right. So it, it's a huge financial loss, so we better get some good entertainment value out of it. How many candidates are there at, at this stage? I don't Maybe know. Maybe 15? It, uh, probably more than 20. Uh, it's, it, the barriers to entry for governorship are much lower than they are for seats in the House of Representatives or House of Councilors. The House of Councilors election, for example, just now, one of the reasons why the Communist Party decided to cut back on its own 
participation must be the cost because it costs six million yen just to pl just to play. It's a deposit. It's a deposit. And, and if it, you don't win a certain number of, of five cast votes, five percent of the votes, you, you lose, lose your deposit. Your deposit. <laughs> uh, and so all these folks who are signing up for the governor's race are, are going to lose their deposits. Uh, and, you, and you need a little money. And, and it, I guess it's one way for the people of Tokyo to claw a little money mm -hmm. back from the costs of this election. One thing we noticed, Michael, during the election for the upper house was how quiet Tokyo was. With so many candidates running for the governorship of Tokyo, you can imagine this 10-day election period is going to be rather raucous. It's going to be rowdy, yeah. And uh, there, it's, it, nevertheless, I still am going with Koike. She's already got name recognition. Yes. Uh, she's she's got a reputation to, for being tough, and let's face it, the LDP have having won, and let's say okay, it wasn't a landslide, but won in the House of Councilors. There's always a tendency of the electorate to immediately turn around and try to balance things out. Mm -hmm. And Koike, sure. as an independent, maybe has a better chance than if she were stayed with the LDP. Mm -hmm. Lots to examine here. We're going to continue to watch this. The 10-day election campaign kicks off in two days. Stay tuned. We're going to be watching this closely.